So how do we even visualize what angle the sun would make at our latitude at any given um, time of year? Well, let's start with looking at equinox. So if I'm considering equinox, um, this is when both hemispheres of the earth are receiving an equal amount of sunlight. This means that the sun has to be directly above the equator. So this is the only situation where um, both hemispheres would have equal illumination. Um, and so in this case, the angle of the sun from your zenith is equal to your latitude. If you go north by 44 degrees, then the sun will be 44 degrees from your zenith. So considering this, at equinox, do you think the energy flux would be larger in Eugene at 44 north or La Paz, Bolivia at 16 and a half south? Indeed, yep. So the sun is directly overhead the equator at the equinox. So of anywhere on Earth, the equator would experience the greatest solar flux on the equinox because the sunlight would be most directly perpendicular. So it would be coming down exactly perpendicular at the equator. So um, Eugene versus La Paz, which one of these will have the sun closest to zenith on the equinox and why? Yep, exactly. And I'm seeing similar things in the chat. So that's exactly my reasoning. La Paz is closer to the equator. So the sun's gonna be closest to zenith there. It'll still be 16 and a half degrees away from zenith, but it will be 44 degrees away from zenith in Eugene on the equinox. So if the sunlight is at a steeper angle, then the energy flux is higher. And this is the case for La Paz. I want to try to visualize the altitude of the sun geometrically. So here's the Earth tilted at 23 and a half degrees. Um, the yellow arrows are supposed to be sunlight. And if I just pick out a single ray of sunlight that's um, striking the Earth's surface and ask myself, where does this um, ray of sunlight strike the surface perpendicular at northern summer? So this is northern hemisphere summer, June solstice. Uh, what location would this happen at? So what latitude experiences the sun at the zenith on the summer solstice? Well, on the June solstice, I should be really clear. Yes, so if we look at our latitude, so we're measuring latitude from Earth's equator, and we wanna know what is this latitude here that experiences the sun at the zenith on the summer solstice? Well, if we sort of untilted the whole situation by the amount of the axial tilt, then this would happen at the equator, right? But instead we're tilted in the whole globe toward the sun 23 and a half degrees, meaning that this angle is 23 and a half degrees as well. So the latitude of 23 and a half north experiences the sun at zenith on the summer solstice. Okay, I want to draw a picture on a previous, let's see, let me come back a couple steps here. Do, do, do. Where are we? No, that's not where I wanted to draw. This is where I wanted to draw. So I wanna be very clear what I'm, which angles I'm talking about, because um, there are a couple angles that have been part of the discussion so far. If I look at, dang it, let me try to draw. Okay, if I look at my, horizon, and then I look at my perpendicular to the horizon, so this would be my zenith, then what I'm talking about when I say solar zenith angle is how far the sun is from the zenith. But this angle, the solar altitude, is this guy, the one from the horizontal to the solar location in the sky. And those are related to each other by the fact that they both add up to 90 degrees. So if I have my zenith angle, then my altitude is 90 minus the zenith angle and vice versa. So the solar altitude is what I'm, I've been talking about, but I did mention the zenith angle when we, in those last few questions. So I wanna be clear about that. Um, questions about these two different but related angles. Okay, so at our perpendicular at the uh, 23 and a half degrees north on summer solstice, the sun is at zenith there. 
And this is given a special name as a result. So this is called the Tropic of Cancer. And there's another tropic because the Tropic of Cancer experiences sun at zenith on the summer solstice, but the Tropic of Capricorn experiences the same thing at winter solstice. So you've probably heard of the tropics, um, but this is what's kind of you know astronomically special about them is that they experience the sun directly overhead on each solstice, whereas the equator experiences the sun directly overhead at both equinoxes. All right, so um, how do we figure out the altitude of the sun for any random latitude? Um, I wanna start by finding the zenith angle. So again, the zenith angle and the sun altitude, if you add those together, you get 90 degrees. And if I just consider the altitude by itself, um, here considering the altitude, sorry, latitude of Eugene, the latitude of Eugene is 44. If I draw my horizon here, which is you know, parallel to the Earth's surface at that point, and then include the axial tilt of the Earth as well, then let me jump back here. If I look at the, if I consider my sunshine coming in here from the left horizontally, and I drag out that zenith line a little bit farther, then this 44 degree latitude angle, this is the angle between my Earth equator and this zenith line, right? So that's actually this angle as well. This is also our 44 degree latitude. So that means that if I take, um, sorry, this should say altitude. I'm, I don't know why I'm so bad at this naming on these slides, but the altitude should be equal to 90 minus my latitude. Okay, but there is an axial tilt to consider as well. So if we also consider the axial tilt, then that's gonna take away from our angle. So now my um, zenith angle here is 21 degrees, latitude minus the axial tilt. But the kind of angle I've got shaded here in red, come on slides, that's my solar altitude. And that's because it's 90 degrees minus the zenith angle, it is 69 degrees. So if you wanna find the altitude in any random location, what you do is you take the latitude minus the axial tilt, and then you take 90 degrees minus that previous number. This works for the Northern hemisphere. Don't worry about writing this down because I'll show you one slide with all the equations you'll need in a few minutes here. Okay, so what does that look like in June solstice in Eugene? Well, it just means that the sun is not directly overhead. It's at an angle of 69 degrees from the horizon, and that's as far above the horizon as it will ever get in Eugene. Those are the dogs of the other astronomy teacher, Richard, by the way. So this angle for the Northern hemisphere, June solstice is 90 minus the latitude plus the axial tilt. Again, I'll show you this equation one more time on a next slide. But before I do that, I wanna show you the December situation. So the December situation is basically the same. So we're, we're gonna find the latitude plus the axial tilt now to find our zenith angle. And then the um, altitude is still found by 90, 90 minus the zenith angle. So now this you know, angle that the sun makes with the horizon is really shallow. And specifically, this is how shallow, 23 degrees above the horizon. So the situation in my equation is one sign has changed from going look and looking at June versus December. So if I put all these together, the solar altitude angles, which are the angles measured at noon on those days when the sun is the farthest above the horizon, that it could be on any of those days. Um, at equinox, it's just 90 minus your latitude. In the summer solstice for your given hemisphere, so June in the north, December in the south, um, it's 90 minus latitude plus tilt, and then winter, it's 90 minus latitude minus tilt. Okay, I'm gonna show you just a few quick examples. So consider a latitude really close to the equator. If I look at my previous slide, if my latitude is zero degrees, then that means on equinox, the sun is at 90 degrees. On summer solstice, it should be 90 plus 23 and a half. And on winter solstice, it should be 90 minus 23 and a half. And so in 
Kisumu, Kenya, which is really close to the equator, that means that the equinox sun is directly overhead. And then for summer and winter solstices, the sun is, you know, 23 and a half, one axial tilt away from vertical. One other example, we could consider a high northern latitude like Moscow, Russia, 55.75 degrees north. In Moscow, the summer solstice is going to be um, 90, well, whatever the equation is, can't remember off the top of my head, uh, 90 minus the altitude plus the axial tilt. Um, in the summer solstice, it's going to be at a pretty shallow angle. At the equinox, an even shallower angle. And then at the winter solstice, an even shallower angle yet. So you can consider the entire spread of the sun on the sky, and you can predict exactly where it's going to be above the horizon at any time during the year by considering these extreme points, what happens at each solstice. Okay, so if I was going to build a solar installation in Moscow versus Kasumo, Kenya, I would probably want to install them at different angles, right? I would want to install my solar panels so that they point perpendicular to the sunlight that's coming in. So in our solar panel angle activity, this is exactly what you're going to do. You're going to decide what panel um, angle to install your solar panels at different locations on the earth at different times of year. And I just want to mention before we start, we'll take a break before we start anyway. But again, that idea that we have two different angles going on here, right? This one is the solar altitude that we've been calling theta. And the um, angle that I'll have you measure is not the solar altitude. This is equivalent to the zenith angle. 